Day Dawn's Arcs. Welcome everyone to your Fantasy Star podcast recorded uh, live on December 27th, although technically uh, the headline we're going to be taking a look at uh, was recorded yesterday. I'm one of your hosts, Prince Brightstar, and with me is Zanson Rooks. Go ahead and say hello. I, this is a pre-recorded message. I am not live at all. No. Greetings, everyone. A very funny Zance. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, what can I say? I I was driving home from uh from family yesterday. There was no way we were gonna get this done yesterday. Oh yeah, it was, it was the same here. I was with family yesterday as well. Uh, but I hope you two both had a had a uh, a, a good holiday. Oh yeah, it was great. It was a bit of a surprise. Been, I got to spend a lot of time with my nephews. It was so much fun. It was a bit of a surprise that things turned out so well on Christmas, but yeah. But yeah, we got the we got a headline that we can uh, we can check out. Uh, previously uh, shown yesterday, we'll be we'll be able to uh, stop if anything comes up here for once. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we've also got. Uh, some updates from uh, Clementine as well as Ephinia today as well. So we got a we got a full show here. Uh, and uh, wings uh, to uh, answer your question, uh, there were a couple of things that were unavoidable in uh, in uh, on my Discord, but uh, for the most part, I am going into this blind. I don't know about uh, the rest of you. I watched the whole thing yesterday, Kai decided that it was going to be impossible to avoid and I didn't want to go in blind anyway, so... I'm mostly blind, all I know is City. That's it. Okay. Uh, well with that, why don't we go ahead and just, uh, kick it off then here. And, uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see what comes up here. So, checking out the headline now. Welcome back, everybody, to NGS Headline. Hello, everyone. It's 9 p.m., so let's get started with NGS Headline. I am Hiro Arai, the official navigator of NGS, and I will be the MC for this program. I will be bringing you the latest info on NGS. Christmas has come and gone, and we're approaching the end of 2023. Thank you all for playing NGS again this year. With lots of gratitude to all you ARCS defenders, we are celebrating the Super Genesis Festival in NGS this holiday season. There will be extra information included in this broadcast, so please stick around until the end. Now, once again, this program is to inform players about the current operation and upcoming updates of Sega's online RPG. PSO2 New Genesis, also known as NGS. We will also share details about exciting campaigns, peripheral information, and discuss the present and future of NGS for our players. This broadcast is a pre-recorded program, and for those of you who would like to enjoy it in Japanese, it is Yeah, Wings, no question, uh, January is, uh, is just an event month. That's, that's how it was last year as well, or I guess earlier this year. Let's move on to the updates you've all so, In a lot I'm of not... industries, January is a dump month. NGS, hot information. Because like everyone already spent all their money uh, back during December, so it's like not many people are willing to go out and buy stuff during January, hence why it's a to dump show month. Our appreciation to all Especially in movies. Movies in January are usually some of... NGS some pretty hot garbage that is not expected to do well. End and New Year's holidays. In this broadcast, I'll be going through the splendid campaigns of the second half of the Super Genesis Festival between December 27th and January 31st. First, I'll introduce the campaign starting from December 27th. With the up to 143 draws, Super 10 a day, free SG Scratch, 
you'll be able to draw 10 free SG Scratch tickets each day for a full two weeks. I already did my poll for today, and like 70% of the things I've already got on my account. Be sure to try your luck every day. Same deal here. Actually, I was close to 90 Super percent for me. Part two. Oh, well, hey, you, that, you can trade those in for um, the recycle badges, so... Not only 10 they aren't really worth passes, much. <laughs> but also convenient <laughs> items, like material storage use, 15 days. Plus, an N Master Cube and a stamp, next Elio, New Year postcard, to celebrate the New Year. I need and to get two more end master cubes. I'm thinking maybe let me. Uh, I'm gonna run the purple trigger quest, super boost and uh, try to get the two from there. You can enjoy luxurious okay. boosts like. I need to start running some of the purple triggers. percent and preset skill rate plus two hundred percent for applicable limited time quests within Lucille exploration and seasonal events. Be sure not to miss these. Moving on to our campaigns for next year, held from January 10th, 2024, and onward. In the super pre-announced Urgent Quests and Boost campaign, we will hold Urgent Quests guaranteed to occur at specified times, along with Rare Drop Rate plus 200% and Preset Skill Rate 200% boosts. It will be easier to obtain the 10 star rarity Flugelguard weapon series. So, be ah, sure to no, try it's not. Hand at it. Also, I had a, uh, I had a one of the Gunblades drop, actually. And you'll get 15 oh, nice. I just did the urgent tests, and I got nothing. And 5 <laughs> preset skill enhanced success rate plus 15% boost. Not only that, you'll also get preset. And I was skill using a booster on top of it too, and I still got nothing. Augmentation success rate plus ten percent, and enhancement success. Rate yeah, the boosters really aren't worth it for all equipment in the super item enhancement support campaign. Back to mean that rare drop rate boosters are a lie. Campaign, there will be a 50% discount on Masetta Just like in other in gotchas, right up as a lie. And 75% off Masetta needed when making multi-weapons. Take advantage of this big chance to enhance your equipment. From January 25th, Super Seasonal World Trial, Stellar Grace Recovery Operation will be held. In addition to SG and boost Once again, one that's not going to go towards the title, most likely. Additional rewards, including mm -hmm. Arms Refiner 2, Giga Strugman, as well as Growth Mint and other items. Be sure to Wait, check Wait, you didn't out. complete the title already? I, I'm 91 out of 100 and it's been that way for two years. Super new and returning arms oh, to arms campaign will be held to encourage new and returning NGS players to post their online ARCs IDs starting January 10th. So get on X, formerly Twitter, and post your online ARCS ID with the hashtag um, calm? NGS Super From what Genesis I understand, Plus. it is and if the total added on top of what whatever everyone will receive percent super it, fancy percent items is already at there. Later so basically, if there's already a 200% going on and you use you a 50%, it's 250% like boost. Wait, and more. so it won't take so the sure 200% into it. account? That's all for the festivities. In it's the not multiplying the already existing 200%. Oh. However, we are considering doing some kind of Super Genesis Festival for every half anniversary. If it turns out to be a popular event. So please let us know your thoughts and impressions. Well, you've already we do uh, you do a, enjoying the Super what, the, Genesis uh, Festival. You've got the, uh, the, uh, the 13th anniversary of PSO2 coming up, Once don't again, you? Mm -hmm. I'd like to share some info on the January 2024 updates. Hey, look, I'm going to say that I, I like it because I like free stuff. Until that free stuff becomes worthless and it just starts clogging up your inventory. True. And we're here in uh, base PSO2, uh, the various music here. That area is a uh, tundra area. Yep. Sandy is back. Mm -hmm. 
Snowman Rappy. Okay, that's kind of cute. <laughs> that's adorable. In the middle of the desert, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Actually, I don't think we've ever had a pure white Rappy before, have we? I think we have. Moat Revival. That's like they have gone kind of out of hand with emotes and cosmetics. I can't believe I'm saying that. Hm. And the events continue. January 10th. And we're getting random might. Yep. Well, I guess I'll just have, turn my one uh, 10,000 to 20,000 stored up minerals now. Hmm. It's not like we didn't... I mean, you think back to Stia and the, and the uh, minerals we can break there. I mean, that's kind of what Randomite turned into. Yep. The chilliest chase. Yeti Gig, uh, Geo, and then... I can oh, hear, I can see... Here. Yes, but I can also see Wolf cringing because he absolutely hates the hoverboards. Then again, he doesn't really play anymore. I'm sure I'll, I'll enjoy it for like the first five and then I'll get bored of it because they never randomize the start and end points. Nope. That's that's my biggest hang-up with this. It's one of my biggest hang-ups with this game. Of course, the, the story and then the camera are other hang-ups. It's not like they could create an excuse. With this VR official plant, you could eat very easily have the entire layout of the world randomized every day. Yeah. Chainsaw. Well, that is adorable. At least that's a little bit closer to the chainsaw that I've been looking for. Oh, read a book, something I don't do. Actually, back in the day it was called Chainsaw, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the Chainsaw. Chains chainsaw. It was one of the few rare drops that I managed to get. What is this new wild motion? What what's what's the difference? It's a different gate. It's basically a different gate. It looks a bit yeah, more like I, a rabbit. What did you think? I do like the the, the, the chainsaw in the original PSO, purely because it's like it's a good um, early rare. Starting with this, or like. I, I would say like a good Join early to like early mid game rare, since it does have a, a special which is um, an HP drain. Central City and Retum so City calm. will be adorned the with festive New Year's decorations. The would and honestly take more than take that long, but then there's in a traditional um there's hang up Sega has about this developing time, content. Chiandi is investigating some anomalies in the desert. Like I'm so trying to think what how they put it, but it's like it can take up to six region, months to produce an anything new. Spots as the Rappies continue their festive celebrations from Christmas because they have the meetings year. after meetings and all other problems. This event marks the first appearance mm -hmm. of the adorable Snow Rappy, dressed as little snowmen. 
along with the extra cool Snome Emperor. And it doesn't have to be completely uh, procedurally generated. It's just pick a start point, pick an end point, and then do that five more times. So, you know, you don't have to completely generate a brand new map each time. Just use the open world. Limited time tasks and title tasks will also be added to coincide with the event. Complete these tasks to earn rewards such as seasonal points and winter 2023 and 2024 special scratch tickets. Additionally, although it wasn't shown in the video or slides, a limited time task involving creative spaces where you can earn Genesis points will be introduced on January 3rd. So don't I just had to spend slip. some so I didn't hit sure the cap. To seasonal points and Genesis points <laughs> to get valuable items. Furthermore, we're holding ARC's records for Trania Advance, Cannonball Strike, Solo, so you can start the new year with a new record. Actually, they did change a little bit from run to run. Starting at midnight on January 1st, 2024, three special AC scratch tickets will be launched to celebrate the new year. Yeah, they would uh, they would randomize like what bosses First, showed up and new such. New Year's Remix line offers reimagined variations of outfits from previous AC scratch tickets. The scratch count bonus is also very fancy. As it it's just when everything is the same over and over and over, that's that's and when things just get boring. Success and mm -hmm. level four, which you can use to level up preset skills. And that is pay to win to the extreme. No right oh yeah, definitely. And guaranteed success. Yeah, I'm converting all of my uh, health New health finale right now into luxes. Brings back a selection of NGS spec emotes. Take this chance to grab any emotes you may have missed before. Additionally, although because of that, I consider video, anyone who's, who is boasting about clearing anything as basically a pay-to-win drone. XD type augment capsules that increase each stat. It completely negates the value of any successes you may have in this NGS game if basically you can just buy advantages for it. Include the preset skill enhanced success yeah. and substitute level four. So try your luck with these three New Year scratch tickets and see. Yeah, unfortunately, what that's just the way Sig is designed in the game. They don't want players to for the limited try crazy things like a level one starting on January 10th. Uh, Prim Sword. Central City no and augments. City will be embracing the winter chill with snowy motifs. Keep an eye out for randomite around the Retum region. Like, if I want to make my experience so absolute hell, allow me to make my experience absolute hell. <laughs> the navigator for winter 2024 will be Shiemi. She's gathering and they don't want to encourage uh, speedrunners either be here sure because, hey, they assistance. just... Fairly recently introduced that thing saying you can't multi account. Will offer a lineup mm -hmm. of various snow inspired accessories and build parts, as well as augment capsules and items needed for tech arts customization. In addition, for some items, the quantity that you can exchange for has been increased, so please check out those as well. To add to the excitement, Limited time tasks and title tasks will also be added to coincide with Winter 2024. We'll probably be getting some Master Cubes out of that. Get your hands on Winter 2023, yep. 2024 Special Scratch Tickets and the Veracool Almaty Weapon Camo. Winter 2024 will feature the, a new limited the Practice weapons drill. seem to have been created before they suddenly released all these super powerful Starter giant equipment. mutant Konigsi Yeti Geo has appeared on Mount Ihana in West Kvaris. Utilize the floating boards located Yeah, supposedly we're going to see the end of the, as it I guess, what the current each item design is by April, or at least that's what was being said by one of the mods in, uh, eliminating in the official and Discord. Mastering your floating board so we'll see what happens after that. You can also get Which unfortunately means bye bye. The, that would be the last of. The um, time task for this quest. I remember his name. So take on this limited time. The director of episode six. Yeah. Yep. 
Although not in the video, SG support item select. So maybe NGS can finally start going into a much better direction. We'll see. Yep. I don't think so. I... In addition to powerful augments, <sighs> Another so SG support Gladia, scratch. And Gigas like, I, I, I really enjoyed the director of episode 6, but he hasn't really been doing anything besides just the, the weapon design. That's it. With, Along with it's kind of sad because he kind of saved PSO2 after its lull in episode 5. SG support item yeah, select. item design wise, he may not be that great, but, um, related to but when, when, it when, it comes, really been yeah, to when it came to actually working on the uh well one he act, he completely changed the direction of the story making us actually have a villain that was actually threatening i'll introduce the new ac scratch ticket modish winter 2024 he understood that it wasn't so much about making the player fashion show with items like basically fix a lot of the issues that were introduced by in addition um, the popular pso2 hmzk double-edged mm -hmm. eyelids has been remade into two different types with ngs specs the first variant, and distinct double-edged eyelids, has a low cost requirement of one, making it easy to equip. The second, and distinct double-edged eyelids B, will have a cost of three, but it moves in sync with your character's eyelids, so you can go with what suits you best. The scratch count bonus will have alternate versions of the motion change items included in the prize list like Move Wild 2 EX and Dash Wild 2 EX. Our next segment will include information on updates in mid-January and beyond. First, let's watch the video. Oh, hello, PSO what? Music. Yeah, why am I hearing Mother Earth of Dishonesty? Well, Good that's question. because it's... They're showing off, guess who? <laughs> also, since I've been watching a lot of PSO speedruns, I get to say this. God damn it, Steve. I don't quite... Get the reference right now. Well, uh, watch some speedruns and you'll understand. Okay. So, in all honesty, I may just recycle most of the items from this scratch. Same here. Except the light bulb. Yeah, I, that's I, kind I of cute. Not. I will keep the light bulb. <laughs> and that mag. I have a character who can make use of that mag. But that, again, I don't think is... Oh, thank goodness they changed the music here. Uh, rather than having it play the, uh... The music from the original. I was gonna have to mute the, uh... <laughs> mute the audio otherwise. Oh, hello. That's, uh, Seven Deadly Sins. Yep. Yeah, they, that's what they said was coming up, so... Nice! So... For the most part, I what I what I've seen on the anime, I enjoyed. But it's kind of confusing why they. Well, I've already heard people complain that they didn't exactly like the item choices they made for this. Mm. I haven't seen well, it, but I, I know have... I have access to it, so I might check it out. I have not seen the anime either. It's a shonen. Let's just say it's very much a shonen. Okay.
Ooh, I like that sword. Can't remember who uses it though. I've not seen the anime, so I just see. Ooh, cool sword. Yeah, it kind of is a nice looking one. Next Vera Suppression Operation Version 2. Why is this in the, uh, in the thing? I don't know. That's a weird placement. Well, here's the thing, though. Um, they're using this music in this, er, in this, um, limited quest. Oh. Okay. That makes more sense. So, so they're using nostalgia of a far better game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is usually not a good idea. But they are interesting. They have a doll being supported by Starless here. The only real difference between the doll and the Starless here is that it's a Gigantics. Yep. Just once again, showing that they, what they think. Yeah. yeah. Let's look at a summary of the updates with some slides. It's likely all Zephetto's fault. Refresh your look with the new items coming in the SG Scratch Ticket Renewed oh, Manon's Resolve. Fault. All of it. We're adding Manon's new outfit, Deary Acti, and a music disc of her version of Song of Mourning. That, that's not fair. <laughs> you can also nab yourself the flaunting emote from the Scratch Count bonus. So make sure to get that so you can strut your stuff. In know, addition, just making a joke. the Mission Pass NGS Season 28 will feature the unique 100 watt mask, plus Magform Guardian Tick, which is styled after defensive artillery. On top of items like stamps and accessories, valuable items such as personal shop use three days and SG scratch ticket price slips will carry over in the lineup. Don't let them slip through your fingers. Finally, we will be holding ARC's records for Trania, Fleeting Fight, Rank 2 for Solo. Put yourself to the test during the event period. I'm proud to announce a collab between NGS and the super popular fantasy anime series, The Seven Deadly Sins, Dragon's Judgment, starting after the end of scheduled maintenance on January 17th. Log into the game while the collab is running to get gorgeous login bonuses, such as build parts of life-sized cutouts featuring Meliodas and other characters of the anime, as well as SG and GP. Here's our new AC Scratch Ticket, the Seven Deadly Sin style. In addition to Avatar items for cosplaying as Meliodas, Elizabeth, and Dion, there will be tons of weapon camo that mimic the special weapons that appear in the anime, including Meliodas' own Sacred Treasure Demon Sword Lost Thing. It's also packed with various collab items for the Seven Deadly Sins, such as stamps that recreate scenes from the anime, build parts, and ARC's ID backgrounds using the collab visuals, and more. So don't miss out. Next up, Next Vera Suppression Op, which was released as an urgent quest, is getting a version 2 makeover and appearing as a limited time quest starting January 24th. Prepare yourself for significant changes in the swarms of enemies that you'll encounter, with a final battle against the mighty Next Vera, who most certainly did not skip a leg day. OG PSO2 God players will also appreciate the nostalgic. You know that was a localized. It, that was yeah. Part of that. Yeah. New limited time tasks and title tasks will be added. That that, that was such a terrible joke. Completing uh. this quest. Complete the tasks to get the reward box medal December 2023 and the title. Starting on January 25th, we'll be launching the Stellar Grace Recovery Operation that I mentioned earlier as a campaign 
for the second half of the Super Genesis Festival. This had better still come with star gems as well. This time, it will be held for the Drayson Plant Board Stage 1 for solo and all classes. So make sure to participate yeah, the in this races, one during I mean. the event period too. Mm -hmm. yep. Although not introduced in the video, NGS Accessory Revival, a Revival AC scratch ticket, will be available from January 24th. Not only will there be several NGS spec accessories in the lineup, that were released in the past. Really? Who AC cares about High L Domina at this point? It's High, uh, high Rep that people want. Capsules like mm -hmm. High Domina S and Gigas Mast S. I, I don't know. Enjoy character creation with the new items you obtain. That's all for the update information I have for today. Now let's watch a video message from series producer Kimura. To wrap up 2023. Oh, Kimura. All right. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Hello to all the arcs out there. My name is Yuya Kimura, and I'm the series producer of Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. I hope everyone is enjoying the Super Genesis Festival so far. We've nearly reached the end of 2023. I would like to thank everyone for playing NGS over this past year. We marked the game's second anniversary in June this year by releasing a major update in the form of NGS version 2. We also implemented new non-battle content centered around the long-awaited creative space, which was very popular with many users. However, while the new battle content, Dark Falls, Solus, and Lacille Exploration released in August received high marks for their playability, there were some issues. The hurdle for participation was so high that fewer people played than the development team had expected. And even among those who did play, well, that's what happens when you create a system, create a commensurate with the difficulty level or that's what happens when you create a system where live ops teams everything is geared towards the, the to, towards the min maxers and and, and game players. Mm -hmm. In response yep. to this situation, in October and November, we have been working to normalize the game, albeit gradually, through various improvements and boost campaigns. And in order to make NGS even easier to play, we've made significant improvements and mitigations in conjunction with December's Super Genesis Festival that should please all players, those newly joining and those returning in addition to current players. Going forward, we will redouble our efforts to utilize what we've learned from this case to ensure that the design and balance of new content will be appropriate for the in-game environment at the time of release. In addition, just the in-game environment to make improvements and just in -game? requirements. In yep, that's content. the problem. While we release There's too much focus on the like, in-game, we and we need NGS we need mid-game stuff. Yeah, the, okay, I'm I'm gonna stop this. So yeah, this stop is, it. Yeah. The, this is ridiculous. I mean, there was a time in MMOs whereby it had nothing to do with the end game. It was about the journey to max level. Mm -hmm. That's what World of Warcraft was built upon when it was first released. And also Final Fantasy XI, my personal favorite. And even even fourteen, Final Fantasy fourteen is is still like that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like fourteen. Yeah, there's a, a good amount of endgame content, but the vast majority of the content in fourteen is the story, and that's part of the problem right there. They they have such little focus on the story, and what little focus there is on it is not on the player character and what they're doing. It's no, not... based. It's everything here. These. Basically, NGS's story, because they cut out the story, they cut out a significant portion of the casual content that could mm -hmm. have been in this game. And so, on top of that, like PSO2, I really loved PSO2 because you were able to do all the like new urgent stuff even when you were a newer player because of the varying difficulties that they had. So it didn't completely negate out the newer players, and it gave you some early and mid-game content to do. It's like the the heavy focus on just end-game stuff is greatly hurting NGS. Yeah, 
It, it's like, at that point, why even have leveling? Just just throw us in at level one and, and just call that endgame. Yeah. At this point, with how everything scales and everything, basically, levels might, really might, not, might as well not exist. It's Leveling is just a temporary nuisance players have to deal with when they suddenly decide to raise the level cap for something. Yeah, this is this is such a major shift from how this series used to be. Going level 100 in PSO version 1 and then level 200 in version 2, that took a significant amount of time and you were constantly making progress towards it so it felt like you weren't wasting your time getting up to that point whereby you were constantly gaining more power and such. So, yeah, because here's, here's the thing when it comes to the original PSO2. Do you know what the halfway point to level 200 is? Uh, PSO2, did you, did, you, know? did you say? No, in the original PSO. In the original PSO, do you know what the halfway point to level 200 is? That's like level 187 or something. 182. At level 182, you are at the halfway point of EXP needed to get to level 200. But at that point, because, like, um, level 180 onwards, it really does not matter, because you're able to equip any item that you can get at, um, after that point. So it is just purely bragging rights at that point. But th that was the thing. It's like, endgame for PSO started at level 80. Yep. Like, and even then, the endgame didn't start, because if you tried to go into ultimate at level 80, you were going to fail hard. Oh yeah, you're absolutely going to get destroyed. That's why like ha like hard was the recommended to uh like get a good amount of gear and uh, unless you had someone that could carry you through the early levels uh, in ultimate yeah, you were leveling up on hard and making sure they actually had a good stockpile of rares from there before or very hard and then you went into ultimate from there. Yep, it's why in those in those days the advice was get a red weapon as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, red weapons um, on the original PSO were really good. Yeah, the the only way that you'd be able to survive ultimate without one of those is if you had a high hit percentage weapon, and nobody had that back then because it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. But as soon as version two hit, well, there you go. They did, uh, they did eventually balance some of that out in Episodes 1 and 2 uh, on the GameCube and uh, Xbox and then further in Blue Burst. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we're, we're talking the Dreamcast days here. That's, that's, yeah. that's how it was originally. So this, this series has gone from being intentionally hard, partly because of the game design back then, to being this extremely easy pay-to-win crap at this point now. Mm-hmm. It's like, I want harder content. It's like, gate, like, okay. So I know the whole, like, thing of, of against gatekeeping content. It's like, okay, fine. But you need to have that kind of stuff because it gives incentive towards the uh, people, like, to, towards the newer players and towards the casuals to want to get better so that they can eventually do the harder content. But then they don't get to play with their... Yeah, but then they don't get to play with their friends. And it's such a big deal people make make about make about this game is that they can't play with their, that someone new can't jump jump in with their friends who have been playing for a couple of months. And I'm, go I'm going, well, okay. Most, most, okay, so that's the case with most. There's a reason. Yeah. And, and, part, and plus, part, like if you really wanted to, like they could just go on to another character and just level up alongside the their friend. Yep. Or, like, you know, why don't we go back to what PSO, PSU, and even PSO2 before New Genesis did have multiple ranks of the same quest? Mm -hmm. so, yep, that's one of the biggest things that needs to be done again. But then again, we have a problem with... Then we run into a problem with that there is almost no one uh, at the old at the lower levels, you can't convince the older players, the, the older players with higher level characters, to go back to the lower levels. There, and, that, there... and that is true. That yeah. is true. But that's how it also is right now in New Genesis. Yep. yep. 
there there needs to better to be a better solution. And I know Rooks, you were talking about that whole idea of uh, of enemy scaling, um, a version it, of enemy scaling. Basically, when your work one of the, it works on a basic concept that everyone's that every enemy has on enemies HP percents. And it's a bit complicated, and every time I've tried to explain it. Most people can't seem to understand it, so it's one of those things I might need help actually explaining in the I, future. I might have a way to explain it. So let's say it doesn't, in terms of enemy scaling, it ultimately you're still seeing the number of, of uh, the damage numbers that you do to that enemy, um, regardless of if you're level one or level eighty. You you do the damage that you do. On your screen, but ultimately a boss is going to have, let's say, it's going to take a thousand hits for it to go down, and that's just a thousand raw hits. So, uh, the damage that you do at level one is is what that HP would be uh, if you had to do if you had to damage it a thousand times. Um, while at level eighty, you'd be showing a different damage number, but it's still a thousand hits that that boss needs to take, and it's the cumulative a thousand hits that actually brings it down, rather than the actual damage numbers that you're seeing on the screen. I think that's how you've been trying to explain it. Issue with not that? Really, is not that really. Just, yeah, the that's issue not with going that that way, uh, bright, is that it just makes it to where you never feel powerful. Well, true. Here's the here's the. I see this is one of those things where it would be in a quest where you knew you were being scaled. Mm -hmm. And that was not actually the idea. The idea is that everyone's working to working on taking down their own version and the cumulative percent of the damage you eat due to your version gets added together to the oh. final oh, HP yeah. bar. And that way you're fighting against the version that's relevant to you. But everyone else is working on on a different on a on a different level, so that it all adds together at the end. So, like if you do if you've done like twenty five percent damage to the boss, and then lower level players done fifteen percent, that fifteen percent and that twenty five percent come together, and you get um, forty percent on the boss uh, cumulatively. Kind of like the the quest clear bar in uh, base PSO two. Kind of, but it's not across. But it's not across multiple. Ver it's not across multiple. It's quests. It's basically just cumulative boss HP. Yeah, basically, it's a cumulative. Mm -hmm. And that way, everyone's basically fighting their own version of it. But it's not. But there. But since basically the AI doesn't change on any of the difficulty levels. It's one of the things we notice is that across all the difficulty levels, there's only one version of the AI package that plays. So mm -hmm. like on hard, like on like on rank one versus in rank three, the boss behaves almost exactly the same. So there's no reason why you can't have two versions of the have to have basically a group of Rank one players or a group of rank two, rank five players in the same quest fighting the same boss, but that boss is scaled based on who you're who's fighting it at that time, and it becomes mm -hmm. an eight percent of the HP scale. But as I said, it's one of those things a lot of people have a dif have difficulty um, understanding. On the, yeah, because it's no longer working towards a static HP percent HP number. It's working against a cumulative percent. percentage. Yes. Yep, but I apologize so, that I got that wrong before. It's okay. But that is the that is how I would fix the whole um scaling issue because it because the previous level scaling that Fancy Star Online 2 tried to do in um episode five didn't work. You were even if you were, um, at level it scaled your level down, yes, but you still had your overpowered weapons with it, and those weren't scaled down either. So you were basically just ransacking the you if you had a bunch of high level players 
you were basically ransacking the boss, but you had a bunch of low level players who didn't have the same level of equipment. It, I mean, the enemies in the Buster Quest would be take so much longer. So, mm-hmm. and oh, not Buster Quest. And yeah, Fanny, that was what what I actually meant. Yeah, if you do it like hit number of hits, it becomes a case of your damage doesn't matter. But mm-hmm. if you do it based on percentage, your damage does matter. It's just that that it's based on the progress each group has versus that version you're fighting. And as I said, it's the same boss. You're attacking the same on the screen. It looks like you're attacking the same boss, but the boss will have different stats based on the groups fighting it. That kind of makes sense. And that would fix a lot of issues with, it's like, oh, we don't want to completely exclude the new players. Well, yes, you should exclude the new players. They should get up to the current content. Just, But just give them something to do. Like, focus on giving early and mid-game players something to actually do instead of just focusing everything on endgame. That's what was hurting Episode 5. All of the focus was on endgame stuff. Yeah, the, 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 they, they basically repeated the same mistake just simply by, uh, doing the, uh, by removing those uh, urgent quests from the game, making it so that they mm-hmm. never show up again. So why, can't you, why can't you have multiple urgent quests in each region? Like that, that would be, actually be very good and, and give people incentive to keep playing even when the urgent quests are not going on. Yep, but I think we I think we've we've spent enough time on this here. Yeah, uh, let's 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 move on uh, with uh, with the rest of what Kimura is saying here. But yeah, I, all right. we all we all kind of needed to explode at that one. I think there. Yeah. Us in this process, we would appreciate your continued input and feedback. Now we today, just gave it. <laughs> I would like to present to you our roadmap for the first half of next year, 2024. First, until the start of scheduled maintenance on January 30th, we'll be running the second half of the Super Genesis Festival campaign, which was unveiled today. They're still doing dual quests. Then, even before we get into mm, February. Yep. After, the After they said that on January 31st, they got or, re- they got we'll bad feedback about that. To the Kavaris region, yep. Raising the so class we're going to see what happens. Yep. To coincide with that addition, and the base Kavaris theme will be added to Creative Space. We will also be releasing story quests for the first time in a while, along with expanding on the Ranger and Gunner classes. In addition. Dual quests phase four, as well as five. So that should be good for you there, uh, Zance, since yes, uh, you like Gunner, right? I, I, yes, Gunner is my main. The released roadmap had dual quests phase four scheduled for release in December. In response to user feedback up to the already released phase three, we have changed our approach to reduce the pace of releases and will instead focus on creating more challenging content. So we are Thank rescheduling you. the release of phase four. We apologize for not informing you of this sooner. During the same period, we plan to release a new type of standing party quest. This will be a quest with a new type of gameplay, with both a high difficulty version and a normal difficulty version available simultaneously. In there addition, you go. Well, yeah. That already exactly that. On our various something for the casuals and something account, for the hardcore. A second collaboration with the virtual livers of Niji Sanji is also planned. Then, in April and May, an anniversary event will be held in advance of the third anniversary of NGS in June, with an assortment of limited-time quests released for this event. Didn't they do that this year as well? Update, we'll be expanding on Lucille exploration and tech arts customization. Where they had the anniversary we'll early in... Content. Like Before version two came out, difficulty party quests and I additional think? battle dia purple collaborations I, maybe? with popular I, game titles from other companies. Haven't been paying attention and anime that based on popular shonen manga are also. I haven't cared enough to keep track of the dates during the June July period. A new also, uh, the silhouette there. Uh, I don't 
that, that looks like we'll the original Dark Falls, but I don't think that's Dark Falls. Regions. Yeah, an accompanying like, story Fantasy Star Dark Falls. In addition, we'll be holding a PSO2 12th anniversary event with a wide range of limited time quests. We're planning to release dual quest phase 5 and a creative space theme with Japanese style specs as well as expand on the fighter class. Plus, we'll have collabs with a popular science fiction anime and an anime based on a popular light novel. Even more noteworthy, we'll be implementing a new action system as a battle element. This is new action content that all players can enjoy, separate from classes and weapons, so we hope you'll be excited for its release. That concludes the explanation of the roadmap. But today, I would also like to show you a preview video with a little more. Do I need about you to be ready to pause on some of these the things. Action system that I just okay. Which will be available from June onwards. Let's have a look. Get ready. Oh. Oh yeah, city. Pause. Oh, yeah, I I saw that and I'm like, is that Clarissa? Also, this is the city yes, that I, I was talking about that I knew that was the only thing I heard about. So, first off, Arwen's already confirmed that text is that text is Oracle Arc's font. And let me oh. pull up what was said in the Discord. Yeah, it's it it's yeah, I can I can already tell, yeah, that, that text is is Oracle. Um Urban District Personal Facility. Huh. So, okay, so a few things catch my eye here. First, yeah, that that definitely looks like the, Cl the Clarissa, which leads to another question. Why is it so big? Are we actually the size of ants or something? Actually, my theory is this is Gyra. Could be. And, uh, or at least actually, this was the facility that we were shot from. Actually, hmm, I don't know if it is. And because here's the thing: if we if we look, um, if we look behind Clarissa, it looks like this might be a ring world, actually, or not not a Maybe. ring world, but a but a but a planet that has rings around it. Maybe, but it could also just be a or a. Rim of a satellite. But my theory is if this is Gyra, the cloning facility that we were shot from, and that's Clarissa, do you know what, what one of the major features of Clarissa was? I do not remember. It was directly connected to Xion. Yep. Oh. And, oh, it also had a direct connection to the Akashic Record. Yep. So this it's maybe this. My theory is this it was they were attempting to do forced reincarnations of the original heroes from the Oracle, from the original uh, war with the primordial darkness. And by the way, if I'm getting a little too close to the truth here for comfort to for comfort for some of the community managers, uh, just remember it's okay for the players to guess early. Mm -hmm. It's okay if they guess things early. Do not just oh, change things just because we just because we happen to be a bit on the smart side. Yeah. And yeah also it's just good speculation based off of other kinds of context clues from previous games and all that fun stuff. Yeah, so it's, I'm it's, thinking with that So I've been thinking that because this is Clarissa this is the Clar this is based on the Clarissa the white. This has a this is an attempt to have a direct connection with Akashic Record. Could be. Um, I just threw in a, in uh, the Discord that we're in a uh, a picture to kind of show you what I'm what I'm looking at here, and I, I think that'll clarify where the um, where that ring is that I'm talking mm. about. Okay, yep, yeah, I, I, I know what you I knew what you were talking about. Okay. Yeah, because the last time we saw a world with a ring around it, uh, it was destroyed by double, or Gemini, depending upon your version. 
Ah, you're thinking that this might be like an example of the, uh, well, that's the thing. When you look at this, you'll realize this isn't exact that it's not exactly a world. It looks more like a domed city from, from, in, from, uh, the Oracle fleet. Right. But, you know, I'm, I'm also kind of looking here at, at, at Clarissa and I'm like, why would they build it at an angle like that? And thinking about it, actually, this isn't the first time we've seen something come in at an, at an angle like that. Uh, remember the Amplum Umbra and the fact that it had a probe crash into it, basically? I do you remember. Is that mm. from Universe? No, that's uh, PSO Episode 3 Card Revolution. Okay, I know nothing oh, about Card yeah. Revolution because I never got... Because, well, by the time I got over the idea that it was a trading card game uh, simulator, it was already too late for me to go buy. Gotcha. I okay. just recently got myself a physical copy of it. Okay. Well, enjoy so I've been, it. Then. I've been meaning to look into actually playing it. I, I, I know um, one person I've been watching playing through every single uh, GameCube game. He didn't really like it that much and much prefers the original PSO. But gotcha. yeah, or, or like episode one and two. Now, I'm just looking further here. If we look kind of behind the Clarissa there, uh, that looks like some sort of like a, like a retaining wall or something like that. So we have those buildings uh, near its base, and then further back from that, it's like, I don't know, kind of almost looking like a dam or something like that. Damn, but it looks like there's buildings beyond it as well, though. Yeah, so that's that's really interesting. Um, okay. All right. Uh, did you uh, did either of you uh, see anything else, or are we good to uh, continue on here? We're good to continue. Good to continue. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Oh wow, this is happening real fast. Um, very, very uh, fast. Yeah, very fast. Yeah, let's. Sonatus does look like it's from. Uh... Sonatus does look like it's from Tokyo in some ways, but they yeah. can they. I wouldn't be surprised if Tokyo, in, if that version of Earth and, um, and uh, Oracle still had communications afterward, so. Yeah, you, if we look on the on the left side of this shot here, we can actually see there are some buildings uh, still under construction here, it looks like. Mm hmm Okay. Oh, and actually, this is outside that... that um, I Retaining guess wall, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, I guess we really should just go kind of shot by shot here, then. Pretty much. All right, so there's that. Yeah, we already one. seen that. So, honestly, this could be office buildings for all I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I've been hearing is people are saying this looks a lot like the beta city that people were were seeing in a you know the beta footage that was released a while back. Uh, this is looking mean, like the beta city they were making. Yeah, the um, uh, alpha actually in that case or pre-alpha even. Uh, for uh, like PSO2 or NGS? PSO2. Oh, for PSO2, okay. Yeah. Basically, uh, we got the alpha. We play, we've play. we been playing the alpha for NGS, unfortunately. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, just a top-down view from here. Something right underneath the end there, um, which I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I guess we'll see soon enough. Some sort of container. Uh, this... Those were those, uh, buildings of the construction from the site view that we saw, I believe. Yeah, but it also... Okay. It's weird that it also kind of looks like, uh, there might be, like, heat pipes? Like, we're kind of looking inside of a, like, a computer here? That's... They may have been pulling that for pulling the heat pipe design from internal uh from a mobile circuit board for the ideas here 
But what bugs me is why do why the heck do arcs use solar power at all? Because it makes absolutely no sense when they should be powering everything through photons. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Especially because, you know, we've got photons all now, apparently, which is just a, just a, a physical form of that now. Yep. No, I think we've seen photons all in the form of the liquid that Zhao's body and, well, Zhao's main body and Xion's main body is made out of. Yep. But that's the only theory we haven't gotten that confirmed. Mm -hmm. Nice sure. giant tower. Yep, giant tower and apparently a lot of, uh, a lot of lights around. Whoa. Those look more like traffic signals. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we have the dash. We have the dash pads from. Oh boy, the dash pads. Yep. I and love the dash pads. There's also some verticality to this place, apparently, as well. Yep. So. We have we have one of those um, lifters things. Yep. Okay. This is just panning around. Another dash panel over there. Actually, is that a dash panel? It looks like a dash panel from Tokyo, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This area might be large enough to actually need dash panels to enhance the photon dash. Could be, yeah. Alright. Uh, looks like that might be the edge of the city there, actually, in the yes. lower level. Yes, Wings. Uh, photon soul is what is the what the liquid component of the dolls is. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then... So each of the buildings uh, has a number. I know those are 30-something. Uh, I don't have the... Uh, I don't have the conversion uh, chart in front of me to verify which number that is. I Hang guess. on, let me grab it. Well, um, uh, Arwen posted it when he was talking about it. Hang on. Okay. There's definitely some trees around though, so that's that's also good to see. Um, I'm kind of curious. I know they said that this is this is um, it, the number what? is 37. 37. Okay. And I'm going. Why is it called 37? Well, we've we've seen and... other 30 buildings around here. Um, and why should it be tied to uh, Xion? Oh, the photon soul? It mm -hmm. is... Okay, so... Wings, do you remember what Xion's original form looked like? Her base body. Um, the reason where you're saying that photon soul may be that liquid is because Xion's body was made of some sort of liquid infused with photons. That... It's a lot like photons all. And the body that we often see is actually a manifestation created by the by the planet. It wasn't just a water planet. It was something beyond just water. It just looked like a water. So what we're saying is that photon soul may be some sort of artificial version of that liquid that the arcs have learned to use to make um, soft robots. Yeah, and as for what uh, Castro said, they were more talking about uh, the idea of an anti-photon group, uh, but I don't remember them actually saying that they were removing photons from weapons directly. No, uh, in fact, we, in fact, it was all a hypothesis that there might be a group that doesn't like photons. Yeah, there was there was no proof that such a thing even existed at that point. He 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 was just guessing what could have happened. Yeah, because he figured that because the whole problem with the profound darkness occurred because of the introduction of photons into their society, he figured that there may be a group that decides. 
no more photons ever because it did it, it create only created problems in their eyes. So that's a, where the idea of an anti photon group would come in. It was never a policy that was going to necessarily be introduced or anything. Yep. Hmm. All right. Let's uh, let's continue on here. Okay. So now we got a group shot. Uh, I'm guessing those are like uh, poster uh, areas that they could like two ads or something on. Maybe. Probably. Kind of like the ones in, like kind of like the fake ads in Central. Kinda, yeah. All right, I'm seeing uh, dolls here. Yep, at least yep. for the temp, at least for right now, yes. Yeah, they 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 could be temporary enemies. Yes, we we don't know if dolls would actually be able to make it to this place. My theory is yes, they are. And they're acting as security for this place. And yeah, Zafetto's still around. Yeah. Because hmm. otherwise, Zafetto should have mentioned something about this place before uh, before biting the big one. All right, that's moving pretty quick. Uh, and that's unfortunately <laughs> not a good shot there. It is not. Yeah, that's YouTube pixelation uh, coming into play there. Uh, I caught that one as it was zooming in. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Okay, and so I did also hear about this. It's like this. Return of the SUV weapon. A yeah. It's like a mixture of SUV with AIS kind of thing. Oh, yeah, it looks uh, that way. More so, Wing, it, that, that's why I say Gyra. That's yeah. the, that's the space station. Gyra and well, and Fantasy Star Two was a prison satellite, I believe. And Gyra has also been name dropped in previous um, seasonal quests as well, because it would glow as it would basically take the place as the moon during the moon viewing ceremony. But it's yeah. never. Go ahead. So. It, so during seasonal events, what it would do is often would glow brightly and cause the symbols to appear on the uh, enemies. It was attributed to that anyway. So it's been named by the Arcs as Gyra. And it's, we learned that name before we learned the name of Lucille, actually. <laughs> it's that far back. Yeah. Uh, question, where are we in this shot? Banford. That's, that's what I. That's, go ahead. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. They're demonstrating that. Banford. We're des, we're de they're demonstrating this on Helfus here. Yeah, yeah. That's because I looked in the background and I was like, "Is that a ship?" But no, that's that's just Kavaris back there. Mm -hmm. Thing is, it things thing wings is it's been name dropped multiple times in multiple events. It's not just. It's not just one. It's not just um, once been name dropped once, and they both called it. They both kind of claim called it a moon, and they called it a star, and various things. But in all likelihood, it is likely an artificial satellite. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Anyway, so this is the new action system that they're talking about. Obviously, it's yep. it's an SUV. I love it, but I still want my AIS spec. Yeah, it's it's basically the this versions of the AIS, but it's an SUV. And if you've played uh, PSU, you then think? you know what the SUVs are. The they were like one-time actions that cats could use, so some parts are where they could just summon up a big giant robotic we'll like component and deal a bunch of damage to enemies. Honest, yep. Some on the development team wanted to wait to release this information since there are still many parts that are in production. With so many requests for new fields and systems, however, we felt that it would be unacceptable to keep you waiting without any concrete information. Smart choice, Kamara. So decided to release mm -hmm. as yep. much as we I'm going to pause it again real quick. Time. So we did see that there were trees there, but 
what are we going to do for gathering food and minerals and other things there? There is a possibility this is not a open field. This might be closer to something similar to uh to um I'm trying to th I think uh is this Las Vegas, Las Vegas like it, it may be something closer to Las Vegas than an open field. You yeah. know, Las Vegas round base PSO. Mm -hmm. But then again, we may still have other things we can gather. I'm hoping they're reconsidering how they're handling open fields in the future. But they haven't said anything about it. But it's one of the things I keep hoping that they realize they, they need part of the reason they have such a content issue is that they also need to make the open fields more compelling. Yep. Besides just it's malevolent hunting. That that's the main thing for open fields at this point. It's malevolent hunting. I.e. what I'm actually doing right now as we're talking. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's continue here. The dev team is currently hard at work on the new field and new actions that will deliver a fresh, different experience. So we ask for your patience as we make progress toward their release. As soon as we are able to provide more information, we will announce it through NGS Headline and other channels. So please keep an eye out for further updates. We in the development and live ops teams will continue working together to make NGS even easier for everyone to play. And we look no, forward to taking not easier. NGS into 2024 and beyond. We hope all the arcs out there will come with us. Oh, and us I remember from journey. the roadmap, we, it said we were going today. back to Paris, we'll right? You again soon. Happy yep. New Year, everyone. Yeah. So. Kimura-san, thank you very much. Well, I guess the one that we're going to be missing potentially is Stia, but oh well. What's in store for NGS in 2024. Yep. Moving on to the next... Not going to be crying about that. Mm. Same here. NGS Operation Report. For this segment, the NGS Operation Report, iHero Arai select questions and comments from the players to bring to the development and live operation teams and bring you their answers. Here is the first one. The wait time before a multi-party quest launches is too long, making it difficult to replay. Can you shorten the waiting time? I've noticed this before. Yeah, it, it, mm -hmm. waiting like a minute or Here so for each response. one. It really drags things out when it shouldn't be. A new feature yeah. was implemented for Halfia Lake Interception Part 2 on December 13th, where the quest will launch a few seconds after all quest participants have finished loading. We plan to have future quests of the same type work this way too as well as any content that requires a smoother replay process. That was their answer. Let's move on to the next question. A new rank for Battle Dia Purple was added in the update. But can you add Battle Dia Purple where you fight Starless Gigantics? Here is our team's response. We are currently considering adding a Battle Dia Purple where you fight Starless Gigantics. We are hoping to do it a little differently from the previous Battle Dia Purple, so stay tuned. That was their answer. Considering, isn't that already on the roadmap? Let's move on to the next question. I believe so. I would like to recreate the character creation of NPCs and other story characters in the salon. Can we get their character creation data? Here is our team's response. We are working on a way to make the creation data for some of the major characters in NGS available for download from the official NGS site. In addition, we are planning to release a scratch ticket where you can get the required items to recreate them in-game. That was their answer. Please note that there are also cases where we are unable to provide character creation data that perfectly recreates unique versions of NPC characters. Let's move on to the next question. 
Is it possible to prevent the confirmation screen from appearing for item series that are often used as enhancement materials, such as Gold Prim Sword 2, yes, regardless please. of their rarity? Here is our team's response. In response to your request, we are working on removing the confirmation screen for Gold Prim Sword 2 and Gold Prim Armor 2 when they are selected as enhancement materials in the item enhancement lab. Just make them one star. Mm-hmm. Well, you get, you get EXP boost for, from higher rarity weapons. That oh yeah, true. Answer. True. That's all for our Q&A today. Moving forward, we will continue to select and bring your questions and feedback to the development and operations teams and share their answers with you. Please also let us know your thoughts about this show and the game with the hashtag NGSHeadline on X, formerly Twitter, and other platforms. Moving on to the next segment. NGS satellite information now let's move on from the updates and talk about some other ngs related info i'm sure it will get you even more hyped to play the game let's start with this for some regions an ngs store page is now available on razor gold AC can be purchased through a variety of payment options, such as credit cards, as well as through digital wallets, convenience store payments, and internet banking. We hope you'll give it a try. Please note that AC purchased from this store cannot be used on PlayStation 4. Great deals on AC in the Steam store are now live. You can get a 5% discount on 1000 AC and 10,000 AC. Please note that this offer excludes the PlayStation 4 version of the game. Please also note that only one purchase per Steam account is allowed. But wait, there's more. For a limited time only, we're also offering an additional 30% discount on purchases of 1000 AC and 10,000 AC. So don't miss out. As announced at the recent Niji Sanji oh. Fest, the virtual livers at Niji Sanji will be collaborating with NGS for the second time. Oh, VTubers collabing again. Okay. Yep. The four influencers joining this collab will be Amamiya Kokoro, Nago Ok, Matsukai Mao, and Yoromi Rena. Snatch avatar items for cosplaying as these collab livers, such as outfits, hairstyles, accessories, and weapon camo, as well as voices and build parts including life-size cutouts. The collab is scheduled to start next year in February 2024. We will also be showcasing the original collab visual once again which was originally introduced at Niji Sanji Fest in advance to commemorate the collaboration. The illustration was created by Inouka, the same as the previous collab. It features a scene of the four collab livers doing construction work in the creative space. Finally, we would like to present a brief introduction to Niji Sanji for you. Niji Sanji Project is a VTuber virtual liver project with a wide variety of influencers. They are active on YouTube and other video distribution platforms with the aim of accelerating the next generation of entertainment. I don't watch any of these guys, so I can't really say much. Neither do I. Next headline. Neither so stay do I. tuned for the upcoming broadcast. That's all for this episode of NGS Headline. I'm sure there's someone out there who's excited about Please this. Please share your thoughts yeah. and feedback on this program and the game using the hashtag NGS Headline on X, formerly Twitter. Together, we can make NGS an even more fantastic game. 
As a representative of the users, I will continue to work with the development team to make NGS a more enjoyable game for everyone, and I look forward to your continued support. This will be the last headline broadcast for 2023. Thank you all for tuning in to NGS Headline again this year. We hope you enjoy playing NGS next year as well. The next episode of NGS Headline, and the first one for 2024, will be on Tuesday, January 30th. The, the last day of the month, all right. The yep. Coming the following day, January 31st, as well as the updates arriving in February. Don't forget. Oh, the patch is happening the day after. Okay. Huh. Okay. Now then, Arks, have a wonderful new year. I'll see you at the next NGS headline. Thank you for watching the NGS headline this year. I'll see you guys in January. Have a good one. Bye bye. Alrighty. So, overall thoughts. The... I think for the... Go ahead, for... go ahead, you first. The SUV system looks fun, but it's discount AIS. Just, just bring back the AIS. Come on. I would like to see AS, AIS return, but I am actually more excited about seeing that field because it doesn't look like anything mm -hmm. we've had before from NGS. In a... And as a result, I'm actually thinking that we might be looking at something a bit more uh how do i put that we might be looking at something a bit more relevant a bit more story driven finally i don't Which, know yeah maybe... this game is very very not heavy story driven despite the fact that it requires you going through the story content story it's a really great. it's a really dumb decision if they yeah. really didn't want to drive has a story driving the game then they should have been completely optional like how it is in PSO2. Mm. Yep. Instead, they decide to force people through a subpar story that they know is subpar. And then I think the writer gets really defensive when we decide we don't like something they've done, too, as well. I've already said my fill about that. Man, it... <laughs> Yeah, I, I I don't need to go any further into that. It, you yeah. all have seen the channel update at this point. Still waiting on YouTube to fix the corrupted version, but there is a link in the card that'll take you to a non-corrupted version if you still haven't seen it. But yeah, basically, um, my hope is they're finally figuring out that they need to... So just for the last month or so... I mean, the last few months, NGS's player numbers and player count have dropped significantly. Enough that I'm pretty sure it scared developers badly. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, what I've been seeing is more and more, thanks to um, a certain catfish on X or Twitter, whichever you prefer, I don't really care. Um, I've been seeing a lot of discontented Japanese players complaining about the story so it's not just us mm -hmm. oh yeah and like i i still remember a lot of the complaints that happened during uh episode four um like story complaints that happened during episode four and especially episode five they echo a lot of the same things that we're hearing now does it help that we have people telling you to giving us the line it's not for you though it's not for you except that who fact is that it you're for not... <laughs> yeah it's basically they they're trying to defend the game however they can when really defending it and coddling the developers isn't going to get the game into a better state it's not going to help the developers improve no it's not and plus saying that a story is bad it does not mean that you hate the game I still enjoy playing New Genesis. It's fun. Just, it, but it's like, 
And that's the reason why I'm going to complain about it, because I enjoy it. I want it to be better. Same deal here. It's why I care so much and get so angry at it sometimes. Because, mm -hmm. the, because the open world was something I wanted for Fantasy Star, for the Fantasy Star Online games for a while, but we just never... But when it's now implemented, it's so bad that players are actually saying go back to the instance worlds and it's killing something I was hoping for, hoping to see improved on. Honestly, same. And I know, Bryce, so you want to go back to the instance worlds and there's a very good reason to go back to instance these days. Yeah. Because it's a format that they, that Fantasy Star crew used to know how to do. I don't know if we still have the same team anymore now, though. Well, part of like, we, form, we, like the instance areas, it's a formula that's worked since two, the year 2000. Yeah, it, the, the fact of the matter is we do know that part of what drove what ended up happening here was the move to Sapporo. Uh, that that definitely devastated the uh, the team there. Uh, for who, uh, who, whoever was not allowed to stay in Tokyo, uh, and you know, if they if they weren't able to uh, move, then they were more than likely taken off the team. That's that's just the that's just the fact of the business decision that was made. Um, frankly, for instance, go ahead. For instance, we lo we lost Wysock now. Mm hmm. Yep. Um, but I mean, there, there are other thoughts at this point that I have. I mean, for me, given how things have ended up at this point, if they could at least, you know, land this thing and give us at least a, an okay ending, then I would accept that and also accept them, you know, taking a break from the series for the next three to five years so that they can just get out the gate uh, and hit the hit the ground running with uh, whatever the next game is. You don't release a version two and just have it plot along like this for another year before <laughs> before we really get into what seems to be the next exciting thing in the game. This is this has been absolutely ridiculous with what's happened to the story here. Mm-hmm. So your like what's the major like what what is the major thing that changed with PSO2 New Genesis with a version two? It was uh, cell shading and the creative space. Yep, that's so it. Though so your bright your prediction about them needing a year to get the um, new content ready appears to have been accurate because it's basically right around when you predicted when we're getting a new field. It, they mm -hmm. literally told us in the game if you did the conversion, the the number of seconds that the number of seconds that that computer said to Zavetto was basically a year later, and down to like the patch date, from what I can tell. Hmm. So yeah, it, it, it's like yeah, they they had story, but well. We know how that ended up last time, and frankly, they didn't even say on the on the roadmap if it was Chapter Seven or if it was Chapter Six, Part Five, and Part Six. Yeah, that that's the most hilarious thing of that roadmap here. They they they're afraid to say what it is. <laughs> yeah, you would think that oh, version two means like the next expansion of the story not just the continuation of the story as is it wasn't even a continuation it was side story it was all yeah after, everything after the starless showed up was side story yep. and garbage side story as that <laughs> yeah so we'll see how things play out i mean this this is this is another reason why I've made the decision on this channel to limit what I'm covering with New Genesis at this point. I, mm -hmm. I'm i interested primarily in, in, in lore preservation, and so that's why I'm continuing on with the story. But 
until the rest of the game shapes up. And, you know, it could happen in June, but we'll see about that. Uh, until that happens and until the story really starts to turn around, that's that's basically it for me. I, I, I put my foot down and I want to get elsewhere in this series at this point. And we finally have an opportunity to do that after we've been kind of stuck with uh, PSO2 and New Genesis for some time now here, so... Oh yeah, I've heard that there's a, a lot of progress that happened with uh, Nova uh, for the fan translation. Uh, there was, uh, I had been playing the fan translation until uh, my, memory, my memory card corrupted live as I was streaming. Uh, there oh. was uh, there was an additional patch that came out after that, but that was uh, that was uh, to fix a glitch that I was also running into after I had fixed my memory card issue. I don't know if anything else has happened since then. I should check before I uh, before I actually start streaming that again. Yeah, because I need to look into eventually actually playing through Nova. Yeah, what I will say is that there were a lot of grammatical issues uh, when I was when I uh, was originally doing my series, but uh, who knows? Maybe that's been fixed. More than likely. All right. Any other thoughts before we move on? Not really, other than that Sega needs to step away from the pay to win. Yes. Agreed. This is not a good look for a dying game. It's reeks of death. As the saying goes, desperation is a very smelly cologne. Yeah, Sega, I, I, if anything, Sega, maybe consider a single-player game. A, a single-player RPG again. Just to... Like End of Millennium. I loved End of the Millennium. Yep. Or, you know, if 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 you don't think you can handle it, bring the Tri-Ace team back on for, uh, for a Nova 2, as it were. But, you know, in whatever the new Genesis uh, story is or whatever. Anyway, uh, then in that case, let's move on to the rest of what we got here today. Uh, taking a look at uh, what we've got here for other updates. So for uh, starting uh, today, or yeah, today and uh, going until two weeks from now, uh, there is uh, an AC purchase campaign happening. Uh, honestly, I don't know if there's really anything worth it here. You got... Your SG Legacy Coordination Badge is, again, at ludicrously high prices here. Mm-hmm. Especially for where the game is currently. Uh, and then, you know, yeah, you've got an EX, X, uh, EXP earned, uh, and then, uh, actually, that's, that's kind of it there. You also get some Arms Refiner, too, but, I mean, what's, what's the point of, of, uh, of EXP boosters at this point, if Sega's trying to push players up to end game so fast now. Mm-hmm. And the Arms Refiner 2, it's like, oh, you get six of them. Cool, I got 37. <laughs> yeah. At this point, they're really... At this point, they're trying... It's a come-on that doesn't really matter. It's something that they're offering players who don't know better, really. No. Yeah. Uh, all that is is just for the whales, and that's it. And even I'm sure even the whales would not consider some of this stuff. Yeah. Especially the EXP boosters. It's like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. It's not even you can't even farm X cubes with it, because yeah. you're because at that point, what's the point of farming X cubes? You can you can't really use them for anything. Anyway, either you can't use them for upgrades. You can't. I have, I think, close to two thousand of them in store in material storage right now, and I'm not going through them anywhere near fast enough to even consider farming them. And X cubes, I have sixty eight of them, and when it comes to the gunner one specifically, I have three hundred and seventy seven. <laughs> yeah, and you can convert uh, those as well to regular. Uh, X cubes, if you needed to. Mm -hmm. 
All right, uh, moving on from this. Uh, so no scheduled maintenance on the third. Uh, so don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then they talked about this winter sale. Uh, this mm -hmm. goes until uh, about two and a half hours from now, but I don't... After, uh, with the way the game is right now, I don't think anybody's going to consider this thing here. Well, I got the 1000 AC, so... Okay. I am part of the problem! No, oh, no! <laughs> at least they're not getting as... I would say at least they're not getting as much as they used to, and that, in a way, is a punishment still. True. Yep. Also, calling Chapter 6 an epilogue, yeah... I would say that it's, it's a bad epilogue, but it's, it's certainly something. Yeah, well, we'll have to see if there's a credit roll after, episode, after Chapter yeah, 6 okay. ends. All right, uh, up next, uh, so this is just going back to some old information here, but we basically, uh, back on December the 6th, they updated the, uh, what, you, what you're able to exchange for, uh, for augments, so the whole list here was taken out. Yeah, so now you're not able to create those anymore, instead it's uh, just what's in the list uh, currently here. Well, not here, but in-game, I mean. Yeah. So basically, the three ver uh, versions, it's most of the three versions from what I'm seeing here. Yeah. Uh, which makes sense because they're pointless at this point. Yeah, I'm curious about the, the whole, all the wards here, why they took those out, though. Because they're absolutely useless. No one uses them. Yeah. Right. Although I also wonder if potentially they could break something in the future. They might. I doubt it. And here's the thing, I had I had come up with a way to make use of the war. I had an idea how to make use of the wards properly, but it, would but it also comes into redesigning how they handle hazardous environments and such. Gotcha. All right, Sega, Ooh. I will what? help you redesign your game if you need help. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm curious what they're what they're planning for the new area and what the story of that is going to be. But I'm I'm also open to discussing the story. Uh, okay, so this is something that was fixed. Uh, hand pose emotes were not playing on preview screens for the exchange shop or prize lists. Uh, and then we get into part two of the 2.5 5th anniversary campaign. Uh, so they revealed all this here today, including the, uh, the Super 10 a Day Scratch, uh, along with the, uh, the gifts, so make sure to take advantage of that if you are playing. And then, this here was a, uh, was a, uh, a bug until they fixed it with today's patch. So uh, there were uh, there was an issue whereby if you did not attack uh, captain or king captain, uh, then they were not dropping anything for you. Hmm. Uh, and so it looks like uh, what they investigated and found was uh, the HP adjustment according to the number of participants was not being applied correctly. Uh, and then it can take some time for enemies uh, to appear on the screen after spawning. So, yeah, that could prevent players from even uh, being able to get a single hit in before uh, before they went down, preventing uh, players from actually being able to get the rewards of that. All right, uh, so that does it for New Genesis. Let's move on now to an update from Clementine. Actually, a couple of updates. So, Zance, do you want to take these? Sure. Because I I think I'm the only one who currently actively plays on Clementine. I, I hop oh. in every now and then, but I'm, I'm like at the low 100s right now for my level. Yeah, because my character is at level 187, so... <laughs> But yeah, so, update 69. Nice. It actually happened on my birthday. Oh, nice. 
uh, uh, the Christmas event hap um, was started, and players could participate in the new Christmas event at Falls Memoria. The, the mission, Protectors N? What's the N Greek symbol? I'm not sure. But yeah, that'll be around until January 7th. Uh, and you also got new suits. Reindeer Suit F, Reindeer Parts S, 490 Osera Suit F, 490 Osera Suit um, Set F, and Land Seal Model CV for females at the third floor shop. And a new PA, the Cyclone Strike. A, a Saber PA. Ooh, nice. I, I actually haven't gotten that yet. I need to do that. And then uh, balance changes. Sojin uh, Rambujin no longer launches enemies on combo 2. Okay. So and then, that seems like a benefit. Yep. And update 68 there also uh, happened after our last stream. So why don't you uh, go over yep. that as well? Yes. So that it, it's the one that changed Falls of Memoria to be more festive looking. And uh, added a universe cube near the rogue siblings in northern continent via Tonga. That's nice. Uh, weapons. Increased the ATB on Ruby Bullet by 20 at all grinds. And the Amp Shop. Increased the amount of uses on the booster boards from the Amp Shop. Multiple can also be crafted at once. Um, for mission. In the core exchange missions, the default option is now trade instead of cancel. Uh, for enemies. Adjusted Fire Go Vera All to not run around like madmen. <laughs> And bug fixes. Fix an issue where Assault Crush didn't change hit flags from last update. It now is knocked down. Yep. So, Christmas events still ongoing at this point here. And <laughs> the server has apparently had many other updates, but these have been talked about in the, uh, in the, uh, in the Discord for, uh, for it. So... Uh, this one, the first one here, talking about the event milestone boost uh, being over, and with that, they added uh, some items to the uh, to the drop tables uh, in uh, different uh, missions. Uh, Zance, uh, do any of these weapons look like anything that you'd be interested in here? Uh, since I mostly play as Acrotacker, uh, not really. Gotcha. Okay. Aside from that, uh, there were also <laughs> these updates here. So, uh, they were talking about uh, the uh, event mission, the Christmas mission, uh, having an ultimate difficulty. Oh, yes, yeah, so that's a new difficulty that they're making, or that they've been working on for a while and now just currently implementing. It's uh, something that's harder than the S4 difficulty. And basically going beyond whatever... Uh, anything that Sega ever put out then. Yep. Especially since, like, uh, the level cap that Sega uh, ended up at was 180, whereas Clementine has 200. Yep. So, yeah, the extra difficulty is very much appreciated. Yep. Uh, and then they talk about uh, a couple of posts down here. Uh, to head on over to the Falls Memorial to participate in the event mission. If you don't have any way of getting there, you can use the Universe Crystal to teleport quickly to the area. And then they pushed some hotfixes to the mission. They added a script to Block 1 to keep trying to put you into the correct block the party is at. Uh, and then they also increased the Mesetta reward from Ultimate Difficulty from 42k to 160k. That's a nice boost there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we got uh, more hot fixes. They removed the you collected the chip text. Uh, they fixed some enemies being in unintended areas in the rare version of the mission. And they fixed some Jagos walking into the wall in the ultimate version. Mm. Even more bug fixes there. Uh, potential fix for the party leader getting stuck at blue gates. Uh, they fixed the box in block three, sometimes not being there. They added rappy eggs to the temple block six in ultimate. 
Apparently they were supposed to be there instead of the Kamatose. And then they fixed an issue where dying sometimes failed the mission. Hmm. And then there's another one here. So, uh, and they apologize for the constant bugs. Uh, they mentioned yeah, that they... Content. Say it? It happens with new content, especially for a private server. Yep. Uh, they added a uh, bonus uh, GC from Ultimate for the need to keep restarting the mission. And the hot fixes keep coming here! Uh, so, uh, they fixed the names on the Holy Knight weapons. They fixed the Xmas Tree Spear slash U to have Freeze 5. They fixed the description of the Gerard Sojo. They fixed the Rebel Rappy Plus not being equipable by Master Classes. Uh, fixed an issue where Grinna Beat C couldn't drop both Grinna Beat Fist U and Grinna Beat Buster U. They renamed the G Beat Punchers U to Grinna Beat Fist U. Added the new shiny weapons and Hand of Falls to the Rare Drop banner. They fixed an issue where the Soza Hammer slash U wasn't dropping. And they re-scripted the event mission to fix Party Leader getting stuck on Blue Gates. Uh, and then there was another restart. And a fix for uh, the warp joining for Ultimate on Satsuma, which is one of the uh, one of the two servers that they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Satsuma and Clementine are the two servers. Yep. And then the hot fixes still keep coming. This this is this. I think this mm -hmm. is the most they've ever done in terms of hot fixes. I I think so. Uh, they added a fail-safe uh, teleport in block one that you'll be able to access to try teleport, uh, retry teleporting to the correct block in case the script doesn't work when loading into the event mission. Uh, so you don't have to leave them retry, uh, rejoin to retry. They adjusted the script when loading into the mission to hopefully work more consistently, uh, but it may toss you into block one. They adjusted the second chip in the hive on ultimate due to it being very hard to get compared to the other chips. And then they say they should have the final update for the mission. Uh, collecting chips now increases your chance of getting the rare version of the mission. And uh, getting all 10 will give you an additional bonus chance at it. And then on the 24th, they applied a 25% rare drop boost to boxes lasting until uh, next Sunday. And apparently there was one more update. There is now a two-player version of the event for Ultimate. In this version, some spawns are toned down and enemies have slightly lower defense and uh, mental defense here. So that's it for the, uh, Clementine updates, unless you know of anything else, Sans. Uh, nope. All right. And moving on to Ifinia. So, the uh, Christmas event has begun there. Uh, with this update, uh, they applied some bug fixes. Uh, the anniversary bronze badge gambles should be fixed. The odd values displayed in the bank for DFP and uh, evasion for some armors and shields acquired from a previous event should be corrected. And then with that, sorcerers will now drop items at their spawn point, and any player can cause a Rappy to drop an item now. Oh, that's good. Uh, note that these two changes apply only in normal mode. They do not apply in challenge or battle. Uh, there was a maintenance with double the amount of games uh, that can be created now, increasing it for each block from 64 up to 128. Uh, and the way that you, uh, the way that you're able to see the two versions is you basically go to uh, how you sort the list. 
uh, or, or, yeah, you sort the list of games, and so it initially it's going to show you the newest games, but if uh, there are more than 64, uh, using sort will then change it to the, uh, to the uh, oldest 64 at that point. And then, following that, uh, so this is the, these are the actual details for the Christmas event. Uh, so, the power of all weekly boosts is doubled for the duration of the event. Uh, and during this event, uh, you're able to, uh, collect, uh, presents, uh, let's see, uh, you get, you get common presents with the normal to very hard modes, and then you get ultimate presents, uh, with, uh, ultimate mode, uh, You're collecting coal? Yes. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a weird one. That's that's for certain. Uh, present rates are doubled for the twenty fourth, twenty fifth, the first, and the thirty first. Uh, Christmas fiasco quests are unlocked in each episode for the duration of the event. Uh, these are powerful, dense quests that span multiple areas. And yes, you do get coal for uh, for uh, completing the quests. So apparently, hunters are very naughty. Oh, very. Yep. Uh, quest rewards are four, six, and six coal for episode one, episode two, and episode four. Coal can be used to buy presents from the raw cast by the bank in the Christmas shop quest in episode one. Presents can drop from any enemy in any difficulty, but Ultimate Mode has stronger presence than other modes. Uh, Rare Saint Rappi spawn in VR Temple in Episode 2 and drop their own variety of Christmas presents. These contain mag cells, including the Affinia exclusive mag kit, uh, Varuna kit, Kalki kit, and Vitra kit. And then, uh, when you report an item, please report whether it was a present that dropped in normal to very hard, or a present that dropped into ultimate. This, I believe this is talking about, uh, the wiki that they run. And then, uh, remember that presents do not drop from rappies that are scared away, nor do they drop from boxes. Uh, and, uh, the items listed, uh, with variable hit can have anywhere from 15 to 60 hit. Which is a pretty nice number. If you're able to get a 60 hit weapon. Alright, uh, moving on from that, uh, they mentioned that Solstice Snafu was updated a couple of days ago to always take the party to falls instead of a random boss. And the reward in Ultimate was changed from 3 coal to 4 coal. Two new quests were added uh, on that uh, update as well. They are December Disaster number 1 and 2. And they can be found in the Episode 1 and Episode 2 event category. These quests showcase a new feature to spawn enemies outside of their normal areas. So, I haven't seen that myself, but... I wonder if that means, uh, say, Mine's enemy showing up in forest now, and such. Hmm. That's, that's never happened before? I don't think so. And yeah, it had I don't to think do, so either. It had to do with, uh, with the limitations of, of, uh, the different consoles not being able to handle that much, uh, uh, basically the memory requirements. So that's that's actually a really uh, a really interesting update if they were able to pull that off. Uh, there was another update on the fifteenth. Uh, they made some back end changes uh, to allow other admins to admin better. All the login and patch server messages were finally tra translated to Japanese. Some more strings on the ship that were missed were translated as well. The sorting bug on the ship counter should also be fixed, so, so although you could see all 128 games refreshing before, the sorting wasn't properly occurring. 
And they changed, uh, for Blue Full Ultimate Episode 1 drops, the Heaven Striker from the Del D has been changed from 1 out of 5,851 to 1 out of 4,255. And then there was an update on the 20th. Uh, so, with this update, uh, certain units can now drop in double negative, negative, positive, or double positive versions. Uh, and for English players, you'll need to update your Unitex file. And then... The restart also addresses uh, the issues with the where quickly closing the client will sometimes keep your character logged on for a few more minutes. And it's hopefully also the last of the recent Linux port bugs. They ported to Linux? Yes, they did. Yep. Yeah, I'm able to play this on my Steam Deck. It's great. Now I gotta get this set up. Yeah, it's, uh... I, I I don't run Linux, but I'm I'm hopefully uh, it's not that hard of a, a thing to get set up. So then, yeah, then you'll it be able. Really to... isn't. I'm curious if the client works with uh, with all the different servers out there, or if it's just Affinia exclusive. Currently, it is just Affinia because it is a uh, something within their own client. Gotcha. So. I can't believe they've broken the game down that much that they've actually managed to just transfer it to Linux. Mm hmm. And then there's one more update here. So, uh. You can now view your character data on your Affinia account uh, by viewing the uh, view character data page. And I have a, I had an old character on Affinia, so I just pulled that information up here. And so as you can see, I had a, I had a dim rifle with a level 11 raw cast here. And some other items, but yeah, this is supposedly going to help players sort, uh, or rather find, uh, where they may have deposited items that might have gone missing on other characters. That seems like a pretty useful feature to me. Yep, and I can show you mine here. Uh... You'll have to paste it in as an image, because uh, I, I don't yeah. have your login info. Hmm. So it shows my phone oh, no, so my Okay, here we go. So yeah, it, so you can see on mine, uh, just like my character and my inventory. It's actually, it's actually very cool. I like that. And also everything that's in my bank, which, uh, yeah, my bank inventory is at 198 of 200. <laughs> uh, I'm not able to see your, uh, your thing here. Can you, can you paste yeah, it? I, I'm posting it. Boop. Okay. There it is. Oh, yeah. That, that's just my character. Um, inventory in general, and also shows off that, hey, look, I have a red ring, and it's a very good red ring, too. Oh, yeah, that's that's got a lot of extra defense on there, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah, all the various different rares that I currently use. I'm hoping to eventually get a far better Lame de Argent, one that actually has hit before I actually do the grind to try to get all the kills I need for it. But other than that, it's like, I, I like the items I have. The only other thing I need to replace is the red sword and get one with, with hit. But the one that has, like, but it has, like, 25, 15, and 40. So, it's, it's still a good sword. It, I just need something better. Gotcha. We'll s hey, hopefully, you hopefully can see you... how much I play this game. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, best of luck in finding something better there. Mm-hmm. I mean, you do have the... You do have the lame Dargent that you're working on there, though. 
Yeah, I, I do have the Lame there, but like I said, it's one that doesn't have any hit. So it's like, I, I, after I got to a point where I was like, man, I should probably just try to farm one that actually has a hit before I start actually doing the grind. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, yeah, that that kind of makes sense. All right. Well, that's pretty much all the news that I had this uh, this time, unless anybody else had anything else they wanted to bring up. Nope, that's all I have. I do have some strange news about the Steam Deck and NGS. Oh, go ahead. Okay, so... Recently updated to a OLED version of the Steam Deck. Yeah. And suddenly, my issues with um, the uncheater anti-cheat that they used disappeared. I am now running at pretty close to six, uh, city 60 frames per second. If not fast, if not faster. And I rarely, if ever, crash. And usually if I crash, it's because Uncheater freaks out on something. However, the base, there are a few rules that I've learned with Uncheater as well that has issues with it one does not like steam overlays well steam input overlays like if you have something like a menu that pops up when you brush over the over the trackpad it will crash the game almost instantly to the point where it actually confuses steam to confuses the steam uh steam input and it will actually be frozen on the next game you lo you load up on it will also it also does it like it if you're starting from a suspended state. If you're like if you're in, if your Steam Deck was previously in a suspend in a suspended uh, state, it will it will frequently crash after that. So it wants you to power it down and power it back up again so that the memory is clear when you run it. However, after that, it just runs. It just works most of the time. Okay. It's just one of those, it's just really weird about how it does it does everything, but at the it just worked. At least it was running so much better than it had been. That, and, that, that is good. I'm glad. Yep. I personally like playing NGS with keyboard and mouse, so playing on the Steam Deck is not something that I try to look for, but that's good for the people who do like playing on the Steam Deck. I personally use key, use a controller just because it gives me a bit more fine-tuned control on movement. Fair. I feel like I get that better my, with keyboard and mouse, but to each their own. I, I play Final Fantasy XIV with a controller, so... Who am I to say anything on that? I think that's it, though. Alright. Well, then that brings us to the end of this episode. On behalf of Zance and Brooks, and myself, thank you for joining us today! This is... Oh my goodness. <laughs> my apologies. You're, your you're getting your ending things wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started to end it like it was like... Uh, my, my anyway, day is, the day has done. Have a good day, everyone. Jeanette. <laughs> there you go. Have a good day, everyone. Uh...